Have you ever forgotten your brushes or forgot to wash them? Or maybe you don't own any eyeshadow brushes. Well, today I'm gonna to show you how you can apply this makeup look using just your fingertips and your knuckles. I have to say I'm really happy with how this eye makeup turned out. I think I'm gonna wear it for date night this week. And also it was really easy and kind of fun to use my hands instead of brushes. It was pretty quick as well. I think there's a reason why we do teach kids to finger paint. It allows you to feel for the bone structure, feel for the product and get a better understanding. So even if you do have brushes, I would still recommend giving this a try just to see how you feel about it. See if it kind of helps develop some of your other skills, even when you are using brushes. And also if you are looking for some brushes, I will link some of my favorite ones below along with a discount code because I have a running discount code with on Chemist Cosmetics, so just check out the link below. But let's get started creating this look. So as always, we're gonna start by applying an eyeshadow primer all over the lid. However, we are gonna be doing it slightly differently today because we need a slightly different finish. So an eyeshadow primer basically creates a barrier between your skin and the makeup that you are applying. That's really important, but we also wanna make sure that we have a very even base and a smooth base because we don't want any drag. So the best thing to do is apply your primer, then go in with a damp sponge just to make sure it's a nice even layer and then you want to set it in place with a little bit of translucent powder. Because we don't have any brushes to blend and fluffy it up, we're gonna be using our fingertips, which means we may end up with a little bit of drag and it may hold on to certain areas that we then can't blend. So it's gonna make it so much easier if we have a smooth base to work on. So just a translucent powder or a neutral eyeshadow, apply that over the top of the primer to set it in place, and then we can move on to our next step. Now, when we're applying the shadows, we're gonna be focusing on the very tips of our fingers, the little kind of padded bit right on the tips of our fingers. But it also depends on which finger that we're going to be using because each finger has a slightly different pressure point and a slightly different control. For instance, our index finger does give us a lot of control, but it can be a little bit pokey. It is good for pressing on like pressed shadows, any cream shadows. Now our middle finger is good for blending, but it has a little bit too much pressure but then our ring finger is kind of a mixture of both. We have some control, it's a softer pressure, and it's great for blending. And then obviously we have our pinky, which is great for those little small areas. Now it's not just about which finger that you are using, it also depends on what your other fingers are doing. I know you probably think I'm overthinking this, but trust me. So when my index and middle finger are down and I have my ring finger up, I'm gonna have a little bit more pressure. This just means I have a bit more control and less movement, which is great for smudging. However, if I open up my hand and use my ring finger, this just means I get a little bit softer pressure. The balance of the other fingers are taking the pressure off, which means I'm gonna get a softer blend. Before you apply any shadows, I actually want you to use your fingers in different ways to find out what works best for you. Now it also matters how we are picking up the shadow. So what I like to do is kind of cut the eyeshadows. This means I'm gonna line my ring finger up with the very edge, meaning I get a straighter edge. I'll show you with a slightly darker shade so you can see, but I'm getting a straighter edge with this. Now, if we compare that to doing like a little swirling motion into the shadow, you can see the difference. This straighter edge is just gonna give us a little bit more precision, whereas what's on the index finger can be great for kind of blending in a larger area. So now that we've covered all that, I'm gonna start by applying the medium brown shadow onto my ring finger, doing a little swirling motion, picking up a very small amount. We're gonna start at the lash line, so slightly look down and mirror or close one eye if you can, and just feel for that lash line. We want to disperse a lot of the product here and then very softly blend it upwards towards the brows. Every time you pick up a bit of shadow, I want you to start at your lash line and then very softly blend upwards. It's just gonna make sure you're gonna get a disperse of product and we're not gonna have any harsh lines in the crease. I also don't want you to pick up shadows each and every time. I want you to blend with whatever's on the lid to begin with. It is a little bit slower, but it does give a better finish. You can also use your hands in slightly different ways. So bringing up to the side will allow you to get right into the crease of the eye. So this is just going to give you a little bit more control and a little bit more precision. Again, you wanna keep the pressure really nice and light. I'm keeping my hand pretty much open so that I have that soft pressure. And just imagine that you are ever so so slightly just brushing over some velvet and you're just feeling that soft velvety finish. 
Now don't worry about the edges. We're not gonna be able to keep this really sharp because we are using our fingertips and we can always clean that up with concealer later. Next, I'm gonna take a fade shade. Again, I'm cutting the eyeshadow with the edge of my finger and just applying a very small amount of this right onto the brow bone, just underneath the brows ever so slightly getting onto that crease area, just pressing this and kind of very softly blending it. Now, just to blend out any harsh lines, I'm now gonna go in with a little bit pressure. So I'm gonna be using my middle finger and just very lightly going over this area. Imagine it like your clean blending brush. Now another way that you can get some precision is to apply something damp and then you can go in with your powder over the top. So using a pencil like this is a great way to add some precision to make sure we're applying exactly where we want to. Now what do we always do when we're applying liner? We don't go straight on at the face because that can create like a poking motion. We're gonna bring our hand over to the side and go across horizontally. We're then going to take the pad of our index finger again and we're going to do soft little motions back and forth to blend this out. So it's a kind of a little tapping motion working over and back. Now, even though we are using the ring finger and it has a soft amount of movement, we are going to lodge it right beside our middle finger, or you can use your pinky, or you can even put your thumb underneath it. This is just going to create a little bit more pressure, a little bit more control. And then once you've kind of done that, you can then open up your hand again and very softly blend. Once I've smudged that out, I'm then gonna take a little bit of that dark shadow and just apply this over the liner. What you basically wanna do is you want to feel for the liner and feel for that dampness, and then just very lightly smudge over the top. And you wanna keep doing this until you feel like it's dried out a little bit more. Now to blend out any harsh lines, I'm also taking the medium shade and just very so slightly rubbing this over the top of what we've already applied. Next, we're gonna go in with some shimmer and shimmers are great to apply with your fingertips. You can just apply this on the upper part of the lid. So don't go right over the darker area. You wanna just go slightly above that. That's why it's great to bring your hand over to the side so you can kind of look down at a mirror and see what you're doing. If you feel like that black and that depth has gone, just go back in with a little bit of the darker shadow and you should end up with something that looks like this. Now we wanna add some lightness to this look. Now to do this, you can use a concealer pencil, an eyeliner pencil in a slightly lighter shade, and just apply this underneath the brows or the inner corner, wherever you want a little bit of brightness. If you don't have a pencil, you can always use a little bit of concealer or on the cap of a pen and just use this, or maybe like the edge of a tweezers or whatever you have handy, just to add a little bit more precision, but also that dampness of the concealer or pencil will just allow us to have a little bit more control. And then I'm gonna use my index finger, so a little bit more pressure, just to blend this out. And you can also then apply like a slightly lighter shadow over the top of this, just to add that brightness. Now for the inner corner, we're gonna do exactly the same thing. So a little bit of concealer here if you want to, or I'm gonna be using this pencil. And then you just want to go in, kind of smudge this out and apply your highlighter to this area. Now, if you have nails like me, it can be really hard to do this because I can't get into that inner corner, but that's where your knuckle comes in handy. So basically you're going to take your index finger, you're gonna bend it, and you're just gonna use this to get right into that inner corner. And then finally, for underneath the eye, I'm gonna be using my pinky. I want you to actually go and find the angle that works best for you, and that way you'll know where you need to pick up the shadow. So don't just assume, oh, I'm gonna be using this part of my finger. I want you to kind of feel for the angle before you pick up anything, then know what you're gonna do and where you need to apply the shadow on your finger before actually going in and smudging this underneath the eye. I then just finished off with my brows and my lashes, and I really hope that you enjoyed this one and you learned something from it. Obviously, there's so many different ways that you can use your hands to create different looks, but I really would recommend giving it a go. Even if you do have brushes, try this out because you never know. It might give you a better understanding on how to hold your brushes or how to feel for the different textures or the different movements of the lid. And as always, my friends, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. And oh, I do have one question. I'm thinking of doing a face makeup look using one brush or no brush. I'm really hoping that you're going to say that I can use at least one brush. So we're going to put it to the vote. I'm going to put up a, a voting system somewhere. <laughs> but I am going to put it to you guys to see what you think. And I will see you guys in a video really soon.